Welcome, everybody, to the Bolero Room, the Coral Room, and the um, Menuet Room. Um, so we're going to have a small presentation about uh, what, where Python is involved in QGIS at all. So in which kind of places in QGIS can we find Python, and how can we use it to um, to our advantage. It's going to be a non-technical introduction. It means I'm going to show you where you can do it and what kind of things you can imagine doing with it, but I'm not going to show you how to do it. Sometimes I have some, some animations that will show you code and that kind of thing, but the assumption is not that you will be typing all the code. You can, obviously, uh, but you much rather get the presentation and, uh, and get the code from there later on. Um, but it's, it's more... Uh, kind of um, giving you ideas about what can be done at all in QGIS with Python. I'm Marco Bernazocchi. I'm Bernazocchi. I'm the QGIS um, Association co-chair. Uh, I'm the dad of QGIS on Android. It was my, my baby back, of, back in a couple of years ago. Now it's known as QField, the mobile application. And I'm also the OpenGIS CEO. OpenGIS, it's a small company in Switzerland that does if it touches QGIS or PostGIS and it's open source, we probably know a lot about it. We don't know much about any proprietary things. To go back to QGIS. So uh, QGIS um, is, a, is a product that has been growing steadily for the last 17 years. We are now at uh, version 3.8, um, which, um, which has been released in June and today, uh, no, Friday, we have the feature freeze for 3.10. So in two months, end of October, we will have 3.10 coming out. Um, yeah. Python has been in QGIS since 0 0.7. Hello. Hello. Good in, good in. <laughs> um, version, sorry, uh, 2007, version 0 0.9, Ganymede. And, uh, as you see, the commit message then was the major focus of this race is to have Python bindings. And what I'd like to point out, besides the fact that the battery is almost gone, um, is that shapefiles were already breaking things back then. So do not use shapefiles. Huh? <laughs> Anyhow, um, we are now at 3.4, long-term release. The last long-term release used to be 2.18. And why am I mentioning this? Well, I'm mentioning this because if you had built Python scripts against the Python API of QGIS in 2.18, well, you will have to do some work. Uh, the, when we change the major number of a release, so when we go from 2 to 3 for 1 to 2 and eventually from 3 to 4, it means that we are breaking API compatibility. So it means that you will need and go and fix your plugins, fix your scripts, fix your things. Why did we do that? It's not because we are mean and it's not because we want you to work. It's because we needed to clean up stuff. Uh, there were lots of, you see in the code that's been growing organically in 17 years. And in the last three to four years, it is growing massively uh, with a lot of um, super high quality um, code coming in. So it was time to, to get rid of, of our childness, um, how to say, well, mistakes or uh, whatever. Uh, yeah, so you will need to upgrade your, your, your tools. Um, but it's most of the time, like when I take a, a large plugin um, and I have to port it from two to three, uh, like a, the biggest plugin that I ported uh, took me maybe three days of work to change, but we're talking about very large uh, plugins. If I take a very small plugin, uh, maybe in half a day it's done, and there are tools to help you. Um, but yeah, it involves a bit of working. Um, somebody told me in a presentation, you always need to have a trending chart, and the trend has to go up. So obviously, I took QGIS versus RGIS from 2004 to 2019, uh, animated it. Uh, this is Google Trends. Uh, so for the ones that don't know Google Trends, is it shows you 
what people are looking for. And you see that we have um, Switzerland, we have an amazing country, which is France. I'm not from France, but uh, all the people here from France, good job on you. Um, they passed uh, a long time ago already. The, the key moment in Switzerland is right now. We are going over, and then we have some bizarre countries like uh, the USA, where inexplicably our geese is still uh, very much uh, the leader product. But yeah, that's about the training. Now let's get into the interesting stuff, Python and QGIS. Um, I already mentioned the first point you need to upgrade because we moved to Python 3, but also we moved to PyQt5. Uh, and also in the background, Qt5, meaning um, uh, that we are getting much more up-to-date base libraries, so uh, all the support there is much, much better. For people that don't know what PyQt5, it is a library that allow us to, to basically build uh, interfaces, build code much easier. You don't have to define all the code. You have a lot of code that is pre-made for you. Um, it's not one hour ago, uh, but when I took the screenshot, it was one hour ago. Um, there is now, since 3.8, there is a dedicated API documentation for Python. Up to now, if you were developing your plugin, your Python scripts, your Python custom applications, uh, you needed to look into the C++ API and then decide, well, if it's an integer there, it's probably going to be a number in Python as well. Um, now there is a, there is a dedicated um, API documentation for Python as well. So there is where you find all, all the, the methods that you are allowed to use uh, and in your own tools. Now, what can you do with Python in QGIS? Well, you can have a more granular control over the UI. You can extend functionality because you can build up your own things. Um, basically, anything that you can do with the mouse, you can do with the Python API. And actually, you can do more because at times uh, you can just combine things much more efficiently. And in some exceptions, there is no Python API binding yet, or sometimes deliberately, because it's something that should not be exposed. Where is Python at all? Well, we have plugins, we have a Python console, we have Python scripts, there is Python in the forms, there is Python in the macros, there are custom Python expressions, and you can build your own custom application in Python. So you see that Python is just about everywhere in, um, in QGIS. Starting from the plugins, uh, the good news is that the plugin ecosystem is back. After when we went into 3.0, there were a lot of people that still needed to do their homework and upgrade. So the, the plugin ecosystem was very small. Like I think I managed to be the third one to have a plugin up and running. Uh, so, but now uh, you see here, there is another pretty trending chart. Uh, that grows a lot, but you see that by January this year, we already were back at 350 plugins that are available for Python 3. So now, basically, any major plugin has been ported to Python 3, so you can... It is definitely time to uninstall that 2.18 that you still have and go into 3.4 if you want to stay on a long term, or if you want to go more on bleeding edge, 3.8 or 3.10 very soon, or even help us out by testing and installing nightly and report box. Um, plugins, uh, when you are building plugins as a developer, um, you, can use, uh, you can use the plugin builder, which will help you out and make you kind of like the first boilerplate code uh, so you don't have to go and create all the default classes and all the structure that you need. It will bring your, um, it will bring uh, some testing infrastructure with it, which is very interesting. And the other very interesting thing that we can now do is uh, create processing plugins, which are plugins that do not have a user interface, and will just integrate into the processing framework of QGIS, and will just put an algorithm or whatever you wrote at disposal into the processing framework, which means you just deploy your own algorithms as processing plugins. They will not have any interface, but they will show up in the list of uh, processing algorithms. 
Then um, another very interesting thing we have the console, Python console. Um, you can open it up in the plugin menu and then console. And there you have an interactive place where you can be typing Python um, and directly see the result. So if you need to select everything that is above uh, 500, obviously you can go and click in the select by and use an expression. But if you're a Python freak uh, like me, uh, you, you'll be doing it much quicker in Python. The cool thing is um, it has auto completion, as you can see here. So you don't you have to go much more or less to the documentation. Um, and on the right side, it also has a small editor where you can save scripts, run scripts. So it's it's I'm not saying it's an IDE, it's not a, an integrated development environment, but it's a very nice environment to start off very easily. The big advantage is foremost for people on on Mac or Windows is that from here you're sure that you're going to be triggering the same Python that QGIS is triggering. So you have all the dependency that QGIS has because in Windows and, uh, and Mac uh, it's not always the case that you're working exactly against the same set of libraries. Um, yeah, here it can save the scripts and, um, and basically rerun them. What can a script do? Well, scripts can do a lot. This is, um, this is a text file that uh, includes all the, um, the, the offices of a, of a bank in Switzerland. And I wrote, I found that on their website and I wanted to have a map out of it. So I wrote uh, a geocoder, a Google geocoder using uh, the Python API of QGIS, um, created a script add the script to the toolbox. Uh, here, my joke order that I wrote, it is a bit of code, it's like 40, 40 lines maybe, but it does calls to the Google API asking, hey, I have this, this text, wherever, give me a point back. So it's pretty short actually for what it does. And, um, yep, there we go, now it appears. And from here I can execute it. And once I execute it, I can choose, I, get, I don't have to do anything to generate the user interface. I just need to say, my, uh, my script needs to have a layer, a vector layer as an input, and it needs to have a variable and an API key and everything. So I can choose the, all these are defined just as inputs to the script. And once I'm good, uh, I choose my API key and I'm gonna set up how is my, um, how is the, um, the expression that matches my fields? This is, is it's irrelevant. This is basically just because my script was built like this. You could hard code it so that it works only with Google. Obviously, I wanted it to work with Google and Nomina team, so I made it a bit more customizable. So I can say, well, my fields, the, the question that need to go to, to Google is name, which is a field in my, in my data, comma, and down here you always see the, um, the example of what I'm creating, now it's invalid. Um, this machine is super slow, usually it moves a bit faster, but uh, um, I, I also type a bit faster, so if you hire me, I, I'm a bit faster than that in coding. <laughs> um, city, so you see here it says Postfinance Filiale Zurich, Renweg in Zurich, and now I should be clicking OK. Wow. That is slow, up, and now it should click run. And eventually we should get a map um, of, um, ah, I choose Google, come on, can do it. <laughs> um, whoa, yes, run. You see, even on this machine, the, so the, the algorithm is super fast. Um, we get the result and you see, well, this bank, for the people that know Switzerland, this bank is pretty well distributed across Switzerland. So it's one of the major banks in Switzerland. Um, that's no surprise there. But basically you see with about, I think, 30, 40 lines of Python, I have a reusable thing that takes a CSV file and I can tell how the file should be scripted and then I get a complete vectorial table, um, 
a memory layer in this case, but I could write a geo package out of it and I have geodata in it. So a uh, very cool thing to make uh, more complex workflows. And I'm going to go to the next slide. Then um, next slide. Uh, custom Python expression. If you work with QGIS, you know that we do have custom expressions everywhere. Uh, I mean, um, expressions everywhere. We just saw before this expression editor is where I can um, mix up text with functions, with data. Super handy and extremely uh, used in, in QGIS. And at times, well, there is not the expression that you want. For example, if you want an expression to get the username out of a Postgres connection because you want to you know, just have the, the connection set up and then you want to, uh, in every point that you're digitizing, you want to put in who digitized it and you can just, instead of have the person typing it, you can just reuse the connection of, uh, of Postgres, for example, is just one example. And here I can just define with the decorator add QGIS function um, and then what arguments and in what group it should go and this function is going to show up in my custom group in the field calculator and I can reuse this function everywhere in every project. These are not project, uh, these are not connected to a project, these are connected to the QGIS installation. The next thing that you can do is um, basically give a code command line option or create a startup.py file or set a pyqgs startup environment variable which points to um, startup pi file and in there we can do things that happen whenever QGIS starts. So if I in my startup pi I have iface message bear push, me uh, push message phosphor g for the win as soon as I, Q I start QGIS I will get a message bar saying phosgis as a title and phosgis for the win. Super handy if you want to remember people that you do not put your own password in data fields or <laughs> sort of that kind of things. Next thing we can do, project macros. Um, project macros are only three, open project, safe project and closed project. You'd say, well, that's not interesting. Well, it is very interesting because in the PyQt world, we have a thing called signal or in the Qt world, there are signals. So whenever something happens, signals are sent here and there, so a uh, new layer created, new layer selected, new feature deleted or feature deleted. And when you write an open project macro, you can bind to those signals. So you can say, well, whenever there is a new layer created, do something. So actually the open project um, macro allows you to just create whatever you want, connect to whatever signal you want during the whole runtime of the project. The save project macro obviously the same for whenever the save button is clicked and the close project macro it's obviously for whenever you want to clean up after your, your, um, your project. In the feature forms, oh sorry something happened with the graphics there, in the feature forms I can create um, custom forms where I can create complete UI files. I can say, well, I want the bottoms up here for I have no idea why. Uh, I can put a drop down. So you're really creating a complete user interface for a form. A form is when you click to add a new feature or when you click to see the feature. You can put your logos, you can put uh, whatever you want. And this can be, out they will automatically bind to, uh, to the data. And obviously here you have full control, you can add a very annoying error message. Use the bar when you do error messages, but this was a bit easier to, to show whatever you can do. So, um, yeah, plenty of things we can do there. And the last and most complex thing that you can do is build your own Python application. Um, from QGIS core, import star, and from that on, you need to to set up two, three things, Q, op, create a QGIS application, call the, the init QGIS method on that application, and then call eventually the exit QGIS application. And in between, you do whatever you want with your, with your Python application. Um, last slides, the shameless plugs. Um, if you're interested in more of this, 
um, a QGIS developer uh, called um, uh, I, I, uh, Bird's Eye View Menke, Kurt Menke, uh, created a super, oh, it was written here. <laughs> Kurt Menke created a super good book about QGIS 3, 3X. I'm not making any money out of it. It's a really good book. Um, then, as I mentioned, uh, I was the father of QGIS on Android. It's now called QField. We released version 1.0 in February. Super cool tool. Try it out. And the last one is uh, maybe going to work or maybe not. Looks like not. I have two more presentations. Uh, one goes much more into technical details um, about what I just presented. And on Friday afternoon at 2 o'clock in Bolero, I'm not sure where, but names change, um, we have a one hour and a half session called QGIS on the road. It's a very entertaining way to look at what QGIS can do for you with the story of Maya, the beekeeper that grows her business and with it grows her QGIS needs. Um, we go into start really from the beginning up to very, very detailed uh, things that you can do. We also don't show exactly how to do it. It's more like an entertaining thing. Um, thanks for listening. Um, if you have any question, get in touch, info at opengs.ch or marco at opengs.ch, you'll get directly to me. Thank you very much.